Hello, and welcome to Our Life. And finally, finally, after eight or nine months, I am going to get that video posted of us picking up our scamp. We picked it up brand new at the scamp factory in Bacchus, Minnesota, back in October of last year. And we have used it a few times since then, and we just, we love it. We enjoy it a lot. Um, I encourage you to watch some of the other videos that we've posted. A couple of them have been with the scamp. But anyway, this video is going to be kind of like an informational video, I guess. Um, when we got it, the guy there walked us through the whole camper, showed us all the ins and outs of it, showed us how everything works. And if you are interested in buying a scamp, this is hopefully going to be a pretty informative video for you. Some of it's a little hard to understand because it's in the factory, obviously, and they were working, and you hear you hear some power tools and factory noise and whatnot quite a bit in the video. But for the most part, I think you'll be able to hear it pretty good, and it's it was it was it was really cool, cool cool little trip through the factory, and yeah, so. Scamp informational video finally getting posted. If you like it, please comment um, and like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, yeah, so thank you and enjoy the video. Around here, hook it off so the wind don't catch it. Then your screen door just slides across. Behind the screen door here, we have a little white tag. Data manufacturing, company name, axle capacity, and VIN number. Your step just lifts up, slides in, and up. Here we have porch lights. This one is your side porch light. This one shines over your battery and propane. Up here we have your awning. We'll talk about that before we're all done. Up here behind the awning is the exhaust vent for your refrigerator. All the heat will rise and go up the top. This is your fresh air intake. This here is your water heater. This here, the only thing you have to worry about outside is this little white plug here. Unscrew that to drain the water heater off for the winter months or whenever you're not using it. And it has, does it have water in there now? No, there's okay. no water in it. Okay, yeah. good. We don't put it in. Okay. <laughs> we test our water lines with air pressure. Okay. Here now we're on a 13 inch tire. It is a D-rated tire, so the air pressure is at 68 pounds on this sticker. Down here, there's a little rubber center cap that pops out. Every five to 6,000 miles, they recommend greasing it. There's a grease dirt in there, just put a grease gun on it, two or three squirts is all you need. At least once a year you have to do that. If not, you know, depending on how much you're towing. And then between 10 and 12,000, or the average every two years, they recommend pulling the whole hull assembly apart, clean up your bearings, hand pack, and put them back together. And, you know, here, you have crank out windows on both sides, and this is the GFI ground fault off. Back here, on each rear corner, we have crank down stabilizers. In the, in the bunk up there, there's going to be a hand crank. All you do is put the little hex head here, crank it up and down just like a scissors jack. Dual tail lights, fresh water tank. This is a 12 gallon tank. When you're off grid camping, you're going to pop this cap off and pour water in. When it's full, it'll spit back at you. Okay. We have a full-size spear here and a spot to slide in a bike rack. We do not recommend more than 200 pounds hanging off the back of the trailer. So if you want a generator back here with a ba in a basket or something like that, just keep that in mind. If you put more weight back here, you want a little more to the front, just to kind of keep it balanced out. 21 day permit to get you back home. We will collect your taxes and everything from you today. We'll take care of the license plate and we'll get mailed directly to you. When you get your license plate, we'll just mount here on the tail. This here is your city water. We got a campground, hook the hose up to here to supply water throughout the trail. This will not put any water in the fresh water. Okay. This here is your 25 foot power pump. When you use your AC, you want to make sure you're directly plugged into this, because this is a 30 amp service. This adapter comes with it. So if you go to a friend's house and they can't plug this in, you can put this adapter on, plug into a normal outlet, just do not use the AC. Okay. Um, just one quick question. When you do you put the stabilizers jacks down first before you unhook the Actually no, you're gonna want to hook it from your vehicle, kind of more or less get it somewhat level, and then just drop them down and oh, take the wall. Okay, off. okay. 
Um, down here now, you have your gray water tank. That holds 22 gallons. That is your sink and shallow water. This does not have any indicators in the trailer as to when it's full. We have an overflow hose on the tank. So if this tank gets full, you're going to see water running on the ground underneath the trailer. That's an indicator you got to change. Dump it off. Here, we have your cable TV. Crank out windows here and here. This is your furnace. Exhaust off the top, fresh air in the bottom. This is the vent for your toilet. Just like the house has a vent for the gas, so does this. Down here, we have another dump valve. This is hooked to a nine gallon tank. This is black water. Everything else goes back there. Then when we come up to here, this is the hose. It'll extend out to 20 feet. Use it to dump your gray and your black. I always recommend dumping the black water first, and you can use the gray water to help flush the hose. Up here now, we use a two inch ball. Safe to change your here, jack cranks all the way up. You've got a VIN number sticker here on the side of the trailer. Your VIN number is also stamped in on top of the frame. With your dual propane, right now these are both full. The way this works is this little lever here says supply and it's pointing to this tank. If you look here, there's a little green line. When this tank goes empty, that green line will turn to red. It will automatically switch over to this tank. Once you notice that's red, you manually flip this switch saying this is the tank I'm using. Uh, I can go ahead and take this one off, take the towel, fill it up, exchange it, put it back on. They'll just keep bouncing back and forth as long as there's something formed up. Okay. Full propane. You got your 27 series battery located back here. To get at that, all you gotta do is undo the strap, lift the cover off, and your battery's right there. This here is the gravel shift to protect the front window. This window does not open, but this just lifts up and off, plug in some light. Line them back up. Snap them down. And always make sure you have something attached there so if these ever come undone, the wind don't catch it and blow it away again. Also, over here on the side, we now have an emergency braking system. That just hooks up to your vehicle. If this trailer ever comes unhooked from your vehicle, when that cable gets tight, it'll pull the plunger out. That'll lock up the trailer brakes. To reset the trailer brakes, just take the plunger, stick it back in there, and it'll release the brakes. That's the outside of your trailer, basically. Okay. Any questions? I don't think so. I'm giving you a lot of information quick. Uh, I get. <laughs> do you guys, I mean, not criticizing your tires, but I mean, how, are these good, or would you recommend us go on and get in some good trailer tires? Or Actually, stay these with are these? pretty good tires. The biggest thing they've had lately is they've had some issues with trailers balancing a little bit. I've never balanced a trailer tire in my life, but I've never pulled something this light either. Okay. You know, it might make a difference. I don't know. And but the, um, as far as as far as lifetime goes, I think they're a pretty good tire. You know, most people like my camper, they get weather checked and they'll crack before they ever blow out. Okay. Because I don't pull mine that much. Mine just kind of more or less sits all the time. But, all right. And the extension cord. <coughs> the extension. That, that, the, the, um, Plug in for the side, so that 30 that, amp. that 30 amp, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's that cord that I'm plugged into out there. Okay, so that'll come in. We'll... That no, that coils up inside the bar. Oh, you just pull that out and shut it back in. So, how about the converter? The, the adapter, that's in there. Yep, that's in there. Yep, <laughs> sorry. Okay, no, that's fine. You gotta ask questions. <laughs> if, if you remember right back in school, the only stupid question is the one you didn't ask, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this here is your outside cover. Okay, yeah. Underneath here, oh, the jack handle is not in there. I will go grab it. Okay. Yeah, I wonder if that's what he's talking about. That does look like the awning one, though, because it's long. And then, like I said, this here is your jack handle to raise and lower your rear stabilizer. Okay. Okay. Stick this in here. Okay, when it comes to setting up your bunk beds, all you do is pull this cushion up out of the way. Go ahead and stand this one up. Reach back here, there are two bars. This cushion is on a hinge. Just grab a hold, bring it up. Each of these pipes has a bar on them. Underneath here, you'll find the head of a screw. Put the head of the screw through the hole, set the holder in the holder. This will go down here. That will fill up the gap across the back. Okay. 
With both these pipes up, we do not recommend traveling with it up. And we do not recommend more than 150 in the top bunk just for safety. Okay. Put them down, it's just the opposite. And then underneath here, we have storage. There's three separate compartments because I got a little wall in each one of them, so they're all separate. You have overhead storage here, and there's another light back here. When it comes to your bathroom, you come up in here, the first thing you do is turn your light on. When you take a shower, turn your hot and your cold on, on and off on the shower. Okay. When you shower, water is going to start to fill up in the tub floor. This is not a gravity flow system. So when the water backs up around your feet, we have a little pump switch here. Okay. Just flip that and it'll pump the shower water back to the gray water tank. With the toilet, you lift up, water in the bowl, flush. We've got a shower curtain here to help protect everything. Up here we have a fan. All you do is push the handle up, hit the little button, hit it again, pull her back down. Okay. And that's your nine gallon plastic holding tank there for the sewage. You want to go back the other way there, it might be easier now. Okay, up here, spot for a microwave if you so desire. There is a 110 outlet in there already. Mm -hmm. Now this here is with your refrigerator, when you open this up, all you do is come in here and turn it on. Right now the light, the, the plug-in is lit, that means your refrigerator is firing up on electric. I hit this one here, the flame lights up, it's going to automatically ignite on gas, it's got a self-igniter. So when you're traveling down the highway, you can actually put that on 12 volt. The only time you want to run 12 volt is when your refrigerator is cold and your vehicle is hooked to it. It's basically a maintainer and it uses a lot of juice, so you want to make sure you got constant current coming back to it. And then this is your temperature. The more blue bars you got, the colder you're going to be. This little triangle here will flash at you on four different occasions. If you leave your door open too long, if you run out of propane, if you run out of battery, or if you run out, you know, if the electric rules out or something, it'll let you know that there's a problem with the refrigerator. Okay. There is a freezer here, <coughs> which has instructions as to how to remove it if you ever wanted to take it out. Okay. All you gotta do is shut the refrigerator off, hit the main power, she'll shut her off. Well, now with your stove top, with this, all you gotta do is go from off to light and manually light them. Okay. You got a silverware drawer here, storage underneath here, here and here. There is a little bit of storage underneath here, but not a whole lot. Okay. Now, when it comes to the water heater, I always recommend make sure you hook up your city water or your uh, turn your pump on, open up your hot water faucet, and make sure you got water flowing through the system. Now, this here is your water heater on gas. When you flip this switch, the little red light will come on. When that little red light goes out, it'll ignite. It's got a little pre-warmer on it, and it'll let, even the light goes out, the, the, it's lit on water heater. Now, you've got the electric combination as well. This switch, when you flip it down, will run the refrigerator, will run your water heater on electric. Okay. So that if you want, if you're hooked up to electric and want to use an electric, you have to flip that switch there. Okay. Then here you've got the pump switch. This is the switch you'll use for off-grid camping when you're trying to get the water out of that tank. Okay. You'll just flip this switch on and you'll hear the pump kick in. This can be left on as long as there's water in the tank. It'll turn itself on and off as needed. Then here you've got a 12 volt cigarette lighter as well, plus a 110 outlet. Over here you have a 110 outlet. This is the thermostat for your furnace. All you do is turn it on. Then you got the two little gray buttons up here to adjust up your temperature to where you want it. Mm -hmm. Once the furnace kicks in, you'll have about 35 to 45 seconds and you'll hear another click. That is your self-igniter for the furnace. So we'll make sure you hear that so you know what you're listening for. And there she just lit. When you shut it off, just go back to off, this will continue to run for about a minute and a half to two minutes as a cool down cycle. Okay. Now your air conditioner, I told you not to run that unless you're directly plugged into that 30 amp service. That's not 100% true. Right now we're plugged in with the adapter. I can run the fan only. The black stripe is fan only. Okay. You can run that on the adapter no problem. Right now air is blowing straight down. 
If I close this off, then you can open up to all four corners and blow the air where you want. Now, when it comes to the AC, which is the blue stripe, when you come over here like this, this is your thermostat control. See how it kind of dims down on everything? Yeah. Because we don't have enough juice to run it like we're supposed to. So, now up here, Okay, there's the adapter for your power cord. It goes from the 30 to the 15. This is for your awning. The only thing you're really going to use out of this bag will be these four spikes with these four yellow tabs. Just take it to the ground when you have it all. In this folder is everything you need to know about your trailer. It tells you about your jacks, your refrigerators, all that stuff. Now, this here remote is for this fan. The fan can be run manually by pushing buttons back here, or you can just turn it on. It will automatically open and start at the same time. Then if you look at the remote, you got a big fan, little fan, so you can increase fan speed. <coughs> right now, the remote says fan is taking the air out. Okay. If I hit this button down in this corner, the fan will automatically slow down, switch directions, and suck air in. If you happen to be sleeping in here at night and that gets me too much air, you can actually shut the lid. The ceiling fan will continue to run. Okay. It'll just be, just like I say, it'll just be a ceiling fan. Open it back up, and then on the remote itself, it says auto. With the fan completely turned off, if you hit auto, a little green light will come on up there. Then it says set temp here and room temp. The plus and minus will set your temperature. What you can do by setting that is if you leave a patent in here or if you take off for the afternoon or something like that, you set it for 68 degrees, this trailer gets to be 68 degrees inside, it's automatically going to open. It's either going to suck air in or out, however you have it set. When it drops below 68 degrees, it will automatically close. <laughs> so now, if you want to stand up, I will walk you through the, the bed back here. Now this here is your stove cover. I don't recommend leaving it sit there when you travel, of course. And then with the bunk bed, when you, or the bed back here, when you go to turn it into the table, all you do is pull these cushions up, grab a hold of the table, lift up, pull forward, Line them two tabs, pull down the leg, there's your dining room table. Never travel with this table up. Okay. It'll sit here like this, or if you hit a big enough bump, it pops out, drops here, catches the edge of that, mm. pulls forward, rips the table apart. Put it down, all you gotta do is grab this hoop here, down goes the leg. Underneath here now, this here's carbon monoxide slash propane detector. In the fuse box here, Everything is labeled as to what stuff does, both 110s and 12 volts. This little red fuse is for your carbon monoxide slash propane detector. This draws power directly off the battery of the trailer. Okay. So if you take this home and just park it, you're not planning on using it till spring or whatever, you want to make sure you either pull the battery so it don't freeze, or disconnect that red fuse, pull that red fuse, because this will draw power and drain the battery within three to four weeks. Okay. So. You want it left in or pulled out? I left in. Okay. Yep. Okay, then underneath here now, you have your 12 gallon fresh water tank. There is a little valve on the end of that tank, a little petcock type thing. Rotate it, water will drain through the floor out onto the ground. We have a hose that goes through the floor so it drains out on the ground. Your 12 volt pump sits underneath there as well. So do we, so since there's no water in the lines or anything, do we need to winterize it this winter if we don't put any water or do you think? Uh, if you don't put any water in the trailer, don't worry about it. Okay. But if you're going to put water in it, you're going to want to winterize. Okay. Um, and the easiest way to do that, if you don't do off-grid camping, come in here and open up all your water faucets, hold the lever open for the toilet. Out there on the city water, you can buy an adapter that screws into it that has an air chuck on it so that you can blow air through the water lines. Okay. That'll help force the water out of the trailer lines. But then again, when you do that, you're still gonna have to come in here and pour RV antifreeze in your sink. Okay, yeah. Your shower floor, pour some down there and make sure you turn that pump on so that you get RV yeah. antifreeze okay. into that pump. And if you use, anytime you use this here fresh water tank, you wanna do the same thing here. Okay. The easiest way to pump the winterize then is to put a couple gallons of RV antifreeze in here and just flip the pump switch on and pump it through so you got it coming out all the faucets. Okay. This is probably the easiest way to winterize if, you, if you're off grid camp. Okay. And then back underneath this side, you've got uh, 
basically your 25 foot power cord is in there and then there's a little silver box in this corner. That little silver box is your power converter slash battery charger. It's bringing 110 power in, converting it over to 12 volt, and charging your battery when you're plugged in. It's smart enough, there's no switches to flip. The minute you unplug this, it automatically switches over to the battery. Up here you have a reading light. They swivel left and right, up and down. You got overhead storage here. Another reading light there, or a light there, I mean. Then there. Up in this cupboard here, you have your remote control and instructions for your TV. Your TV, with that, all you do is grab a hold of the 12 volt plug in, plug it in, now your TV is powered up. Now, when you're hooked up the cable, just use it, it's going to work. When you want to use the antenna, there's a little black button back here, you turn that on, a little green light comes on, now you got power on top of your TV antenna. Oh, okay. To rotate that, you just got to grab a hold here and squeeze, and rotate. This here is a fine tuner. The more blue lights you have, the better signal strength you have as far as your TV goes. To shut the TV off, all you do then is just hit this button back there again, pull this, and you're good to go. When it comes to putting your cushions back down, the easiest way to do that is just to make yourself a little teepee. And push them into place. This window is a slider. All you do is flip the lever to unlock it, and then it'll slide open. The screen will slide with it as well. Flip her back to lock. All the other windows are just like this one. They just crank open. And basically that's your trailer. I am going to take this. I think it will fit in here for now. So it don't bounce off going home. <laughs> <laughs> because it will not it will not stay there. Any questions inside? No. I don't think so. All right, <laughs> then we'll go back out here. Okay. And we'll talk about the audience. The awning is real simple. All you do is take this rod, drop it in here like this, crank it open. Get off the ball here, grab hold of your leg, pop out. And just walk them off. And keep cranking. The tarp will relax. Just roll it back up so it's tight. These arms will not lock. They will always be flexible. The spikes I showed you, just go down through there to hold it to the ground. This here is what they call the center wrap. And it does basically just what it says. It hooks here and there just to give it a little extra support. If you're sitting out here and it's raining and sun going down, you can loosen up one leg for the water to run off, loosen up both legs for sunset, whatever you want to do. Basically, that's your trailer. Awesome. Now, of course, when you go to put this away, all you got to do is the opposite. Flush. If you ever put this away, say this one goes up, 
and that one stays down. What happens is the wind shifted the tarp. So open it back up. If that one's hanging down, give it a little tug forward just to realign things. Basically what I'm getting at is, as long as we can push this away, you don't see any tabs hanging down, you're all going to just put away properly and will not come open going down the road. If it's not put away properly, it could come open. <laughs> And of course, when they come over, it's never a good sign. No. And then we usually just take this and kind of tuck it right underneath. Now, with your door, we now have a deadbolt on the door. So all you got to do is lock her up. When you travel, both of these keys are the same. It does not matter which one you use. This one here locks the top latch. This will lock your deadbolt. To lock the deadbolt, you go to 9 o'clock. To get the key back out, you got to go back to 12. Unlock, you got to go to 3. So right now, everything is locked up and secured. Here are your keys. All we have to do now is have you go grab your vehicle back up here. We'll hook you up, make sure all the taillights and turn signals and stuff work, and then I'll send you back over to see Wayne. Okay. locks down and you'll know if it's locked down or not. What I always do is I just put them down like that, pull this in, and kind of just make sure it's on. Then you go ahead and crank this up. Right. Up, you want to make sure you crisscross it. One from this side of the trailer goes to that side of your car, so you always have an X pad. Then this, take this here, drop it through like that, bring it back, and hook it to itself. Now, what that'll look say, the lock up the trailer brakes if this ever does come unhooked from your car. And then this here just comes around. Plugs in my amp, turn the propane off. And I, you always turn the propane off whenever when you travel. Okay, because I've seen some people say that they put it on. Right the smart thing to do is turn it off. That way, if you forgot to turn something off, the pilot light blows out, you're still not pumping propane in that thing. Okay. So go ahead and turn your headlights on. Thank you. You guys have a safe trip back to Rochester. Well, we're going to Bemidji State Park right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> gonna go give them a word on this weekend, huh? <laughs> yep. Well, you're done with me. You can pull on over and go see your salesman. Thank you. And there you have it. That is our scamp. We've done a few things inside since then. Um, we've added a shelf in the big storage compartment. Amy's done a lot of a lot of work inside of it, and one of these days she's gonna give you a little tour of the inside of our camper. And I hope I hope you found the video informative. And if you have any questions on Scamp Campers, hopefully that answered some of them. Um, so yeah, we hope to see you come along with us on our travels and. Again, like and subscribe to our channel. We welcome comments. Um, and we will see you we will see you next time. Bye.